Hi everybody! In my last video on drawing megafauna, I didn't have a chance to do a breakdown of drawing the head and face of a giraffe, so I thought I would make a separate little video for you here. Um, what we're going to do is take a look at some of the the simple starting lines that you can use to to frame in the head of a giraffe. And when we do this, it's really going to be important to realize that these are not the this is not the only way that you could do this. This is not the right way to do you, that you can make these lines. But you could construct these headlines in a bunch of different ways as long as you are kind of loosely looking at big general shapes across the head instead of initially getting lost in details like how the eye looks or the nose. As long as you're blocking in major features, keeping it loose, and then once you have those lines fit in, to step back from them a little bit and just double check, make sure that you've got the right proportions before dropping in details, you'll be doing fine. So you look through 30 different books on how to draw a giraffe, everybody will have different starter lines, but the general similarities are going to be everybody's finding some way of finding the, the major shapes. When I look at the head of this giraffe, I see a big triangle from the side. And so that's what I'm going to start with. I've got uh, the broad area across the back going down to a more pointed tip of the nose or muzzle. I like to block in the, uh, the cranium, the mass of the skull where the brain is going to sit, and think of that as a sphere in the back of the head. And also I've given my critter a little rounded muzzle in the front, sort of a pad where the lips, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, where the lips are going to attach. Um, on top of this, you can place details on the head of the critter. So um, here I've placed an eye high in the head and an ear high on the head. That's that ear in the back. On the ear Notice that it's a kind of a diamond that rises from a rounded pad of tissue. And then on the top of the head, there's some ornamentation. The giraffe has horns that stick up, and it also has a big bone knob that rises between the eyes. Um, so from the side view, that's just a little bump there. And the older the male giraffe gets, the bigger that that is going to become. So this is one way I could initially block these lines in, and then over that I'm going to start to draw in my, my the, the lines of my face. This next is going to sort of initially feel like a big jump, but we'll walk you through it. Um, th what you're doing is there's a, there's a real giraffe in front of you, and you're following the contours of its head. And you're really paying attention to each angle where that... Uh, line, the silhouette of the head is going to change angle. Each little point that that line turns is a separate decision that you're making and looking out for. Notice how that little rounded muzzle pops the nose and the lips out as their own little section. Um, and uh, if we add on top of this, here's my eye and ear, you notice for the ear there's that rounded pad of tissue that the ear emerges from, the diamond-shaped pad of the ear. Um, eye, you have kind of the brow ridge above and the rounded part below. If you just leave your eye like this, it is not going to feel like that eye is sitting on the head of the giraffe. On the giraffe, the eye actually bulges out a little bit. You'll see this on just about all your mammal drawings. Um, dogs, cats, go, go pet your doggy right now and look at how its eyes are not really sunken into sockets, but there's a bulge of tissue around the eyes. And for whatever mammal you're drawing, if you draw in that bulge, really look for that kind of line of the mass of that eye above um, the eye, and that, that sort of a smaller little lip of tissue down below, you're kind of pooching out that eye. That will set your eye into the head. So again, looking at that kind of line of tissue 
um, of uh, sort of the, the, the change in angle as you kind of come up to that ball of the eye on the top and the bottom. You look for those marks and that will really help set your eye into the head. For the interior of the ear, notice that there are there's some little lines and marks in the ears, but I'm avoiding making marks right on the very edge of the ear itself, the outside edge of the ear. Leaving that blank is going to help make it feel like there is a cup of the, uh, of the ear and the edges of that are pointing towards you. You can also see a few of the ligaments and muscles that are going to operate the lips. Um, those are running between, uh, sort of from the cheek out towards the muzzle there. And from there, you drop in some shadows. If you're running around in Africa, you're going to see rather bold shadows dropping down from the ear and uh, underneath the head. So look for some really bold shadows um, and that will help give structure to the head of your beastie. So here is a giraffe photograph. And in this, what I want you to do is just look really carefully at a couple of details here. One, again, there's an overall triangle, and then sort of see that ball in the back. On the eye, check out that massive wad of rounded tissue above the eye. So that's what you are framing in. That's what you're framing in. And then a smaller little ridge below. So big on the top, small on the bottom. Um, on that ear, you can see that rounded mass from which the ear attaches. Here the ear is turned forward. But you can see that rounded mass of, of tissue that the ear is going to insert into. That's going to really help you get a sense of, sort of how that ear attaches to the head. The next thing we're going to do is take this giraffe head and turn it to a three-quarter view position. So it's turned towards you just a little bit. In this, imagine a line down, drawn right down the middle of the head of the giraffe. That's going to be my first line, my starting line. I'm going to build the rest of the drawing around that starting line. Here I'm adding in the cranium and the muzzle. And because it is pointing towards me, it is not going to be as long as the view that you get when you are uh, looking at it from the side. So it's going to be shortened so that muzzle is closer in. Uh, if it turns towards you even more, it'll be overlapping with that uh, ball of the cranium. The next thing that I like to do in a three-quarter view drawing, once I've got my basic masses penciled in, is to look at a little bit of the geometry of this head. And to do this, what I'm going to do is to draw in a angular shape that's going to be just the strip of the skull going right down the middle of the face and then turning for the plane in the front of the face. I'm going to try to get my brain to start to think of this three-quarter view head in three dimensions. And so being overly angular is going to be very helpful to me in doing that. I don't need to do that in the side view, but I find these kind of constructed shapes in a three-quarter view to be invaluable. Another thing that is very helpful in uh, either a straight front view or the three-quarter view are the parallel guidelines. One right through the eyes, around the nose, the base of the nose, the top of the head, where the horns go, where the tips of the ears are. Of course, the one ear could flick up, the other could flick down, they could go in different directions. But if you have those, um, you, but if they are sort of held up roughly parallel, you're going to want them also to end up parallel with the other features on the head. You don't want your horns one up, one down, and then the nostrils or the eyes at a different angle. So these parallel guides are very, very, very helpful tools. Um, if you can set, get one set, like the one across the top of the horns, then you can just drop in all the others parallel to that. Now, on the forehead of my giraffe, I'm going to put in some kind of triangular plates. These are sort of flat 
uh, areas that go across the, the top of the forehead, the top of the skull, above the cranium. And the eye is going to tuck in underneath that. So here's the eye on the side. The other eye is wrapped around the other side of the head, and I'm not really seeing it very well from this angle. Here are, uh, just dropping in a few more angles, notice how I'm using the parallel guides to line up the tips of the ears, the tops of the horns, the front of the muzzle. Those features that I'm seeing on one side and the others, if those end up being parallel, that's really going to help uh, turn my face. And from there, you put your non-photo blue pencil down or your light sketching pencil down, and you can start to put in a little bit more punch to draw in some of the contours of the animal. And again, I'm assuming that the giraffe is there in front of you. You're not making a giraffe up out of your imagination. I can't do that, and I don't expect you to. Notice those big bumps on the sides of the head where the eye is going to be placed. The eye goes right down below that. The far eye, we just get a little eyelash. And that close one, look at how I'm really suggesting the tissue that puffs up around the eye. Little nostrils, darkened eye. Those nostrils parallel with those parallel guides and on either side of the center line. I've already established the place of those horns and the ears with those parallel guides and the guidelines that I had in before. This is just uh, helping to um, flesh that out a little bit more. And some shadows going in also really help define the forms of this. Think of shadows, pop in shadows where your subject, the, the planes of your subject turn from one direction to another, like underneath the eye, on the side of the head. Also notice how around the outside edge of the ear, I don't have those dark areas going all the way to the edge. That suggests some fuzzy giraffe ear um, edge pointing towards me on those sides. So here's a draft from a three-quarter view. Think about the um, a flat plane going right down the middle of the head underneath that bump between the eyes. What, uh, what would you sort of put into your giraffe head as features that you want to be parallel on one side and the other? Where the eyelash is with the eyelash, horn with the horn, ear tip with the ear tip, point of the nose, uh, nostril on one side with where you're going to see a lump on the other side. You want to get all those elements parallel and your giraffe head will feel good. So those are just a few uh, thoughts on drawing in those giraffe heads. Again, in the three-quarter view, I'm adding that extra step of putting in uh, kind of what's called a constructed, constructed drawing elements, these, these boxes to help me think about the thing as a three-dimensional shape. That will really help you on your way. I hope that this was useful, and thank you very much. Happy drawing!